Hey everyone, Shamrock here to give you some tips and tricks for optimizing your cooldown usage in Mythic Plus while healing on a Resto Shaman. Specifically, I am making this guide to help you push higher keys, but if you are new to the Resto Shaman lifestyle or someone who is more raid oriented, you can still look to this video as a set of general guidelines on how to utilize each of your cooldowns to their maximum potential. Correctly using the tools at our disposal, I have yet to find a situation in which I feel I cannot heal through something using the correct combination of buttons. When I do fail, it is always due to myself messing up an ability rotation, not planning ahead and being preemptive for high damage windows, or when the group is unable to properly perform needed mechanics. I would also like to note that if you think cooldowns are purely used for healing, I encourage you to open your mind and get creative on how we can use our healing cooldowns to also optimize our DPS, which we will discuss in detail as we go. To give an overview, we have four major cooldowns that can be used independently or combined with each other, as well as several smaller scaled cooldowns that should be weaved in and out of your kit for every pull that you do in Mythic Plus Dungeons on both bosses and trash. The four major cooldowns we have are Ancestral Guidance, a powerful ability on a short 2 minute timer that incorporates both your damage and healing abilities into passive smart healing on low health party members within range. Healing Tide Totem, a strong AoE healing ability that is what I consider to be a drop and forget cooldown to assist you in keeping your friends alive while you manually deal with mechanics and high damage windows. Spirit Link Totem, my personal favorite and a staple of the Resto Shaman Toolkit, a large AoE totem that links the health of all targets standing in range every one second for an extremely diverse and unique way of keeping people alive and surviving the unsurvivable. And finally Ascendance, a strong AoE ability whose worth is largely determined by your skill level and ability to utilize it correctly, as well as an important immediate defensive self-heal. I will go into detail for each of these abilities one by one and give you some insight into how I incorporate all of these into my playstyle. Before getting started, I would just like to say that gamers are diverse and so are their playstyles, and although we all have the same toolkit, our styles of healing and the way we keep the group alive might be very different. This guide is not a rule set by any means for what you must do or even necessarily should do but just an alternative perspective that may add some useful tools that you can assimilate into your own way of healing. For credibility, I am not the best Resto Shaman out there, but I have been successful in pugging and am currently working on my 23s and 24s for both Tyrannical and Fortified. And with a positive attitude, practice, and some dedication, I promise that any one of you can also get to this level of play and likely surpass it. The meta may not favor us right now, but that is no reason to not use what I consider to be the most interesting and enjoyable class that will allow you to successfully complete 99% of the content that is currently out there. The first major cooldown I will go into detail about is Ancestral Guidance. There are a few reasons why I believe this is such an important part of our kit, with the first being that Ancestral Guidance is considered a smart heal, meaning its healing will always target lowest health party members in range. Because of this, you can use it when 1-3 to three people are taking high burst damage rather than just during large AoE damage windows. A great example of AG giving a needed boost to priority target would be using it during Lou Flameheart's Jade Serpent Strikes on the tank in Temple of the Jade Serpent. Another reason why AG is a huge part of our kit is that this ability is only on a 2 minute cooldown. This means that on tyrannical weeks, and even non-tyrannical weeks on higher keys, you will pretty much always get two uses of AG on any given boss fight. Given how great AG is at keeping a group from dying during high damage windows, having two uses that you can combo with trinkets, racials, and some of your other standard talents and abilities allows you to be more mana efficient during long boss fights and gives you a tool to combat high burst damage mechanics like both Hersia and Raging Tempest's Storm Phases. I would always suggest when planning out cooldown usage for fights, use AG as the first one towards the beginning of a fight so that you can guarantee that second usage towards the end. Additionally, with the current lineup of Mythic Plus Dungeons in this season's rotation, there are several opportunities to pair Lust with Ancestral Guidance and get an even larger wow factor from this amazing ability. An example would be Phase 2 Flame Spits from Kairaka, the last boss of RLP, 
or lusting during the first electrical storm ability from the Raging Tempest boss in the Nukud Offensive Dungeon. In a non-boss capacity, because AG has such a short cooldown, it is viable, and I would even say encouraged, to use AG on big trash packs, especially on fortified weeks. A big component of AG is that it also heals via your DPS, meaning that if you want to focus on DPS but still keep your group alive during bursts of damage, you are free to do so when you pop this ability. And because tanks pull such large trash packs during higher keys in order to make the timer, there are some dungeons where Ancestral Guidance will be up for pretty much every large trash pull that you do. From a DPS perspective, comboing Stormkeeper with Ancestral Guidance is a way to turn one of your highest damage abilities into one of your highest burst damage healing abilities. A perfect example of this is during the first boss in Ruby Life Pools, Melodrusa Chilworn. If you pop Ancestral Guidance and Stormkeeper during the Frost Shield phase with all the whelps, you can time your Chain Lightnings with each tick of damage and you will heal the group to full without using any mana at all. AG is a versatile tool that should be heavily incorporated into both your healing and damage kit if you want to be successful in higher keys. One last note about Ancestral Guidance before we move on. Currently, Cloudburst Totem's healing procs Ancestral Guidance, meaning that if you recall Cloudburst for its burst of healing while AG is active, that healing will cause AG to heal three nearby players for a massive amount, depending on how much healing your Cloudburst has collected. In other words, if you have Cloudburst down during an AG window, try to pop that Cloudburst's healing before AG runs out for an extra big chunk of healing that you wouldn't have if you popped it after AG ends. This being said, the next patch is changing the way that this works, but we will get to that in the next patch. For now, take all the guidelines and tips I've given you for this ability and go be an Ancestral Guidance Freak. The next major cooldown I want to talk about is Healing Tide Totem, which is a long but slow healing throughput cooldown that has a few different uses in Mythic Plus content. As mentioned earlier, I think of Healing Tide as a drop and forget cooldown, an ability that is meant to act as a buffer or cushion with its passive background healing while you deal with the more concerning mechanics. The main and most obvious use for Healing Tide is to use it when there are long AoE damage windows during certain boss mechanics. The two that immediately come to mind are Azure Blade's Overwhelming Power ability and Raging Tempest's Electrical Storm ability as these are heavy AoE damage phases that last for a long period of time. It is important to realize that although Healing Tide does noticeable healing since its recent buff outside of rain environments, it would be incorrect to place it on the same level as other time throughput healing cooldowns such as Divine Hymn or Tranquility. The benefit that Healing Tide has over those spells is that we can move and cast while it does what it does, which to me is a fantastic trade-off for two reasons. The first reason is that we can continue doing our standard healing rotation while Healing Tide is down and the group is taking heavy damage, so you are getting both the healing from Healing Tide as well as from your other AoE abilities like High Tide Chain Heals, Downpour, Primordial Wave Cleaves, and Cloudburst. The second reason is that it allows you to weave DPS in during moments of AoE damage where Healing Tide is not enough to keep the group from dying. Specifically, for Azure Blade's overwhelming power ability as an example, Healing Tide is a great tool that allows you to sneak some big DPS casts in on the adds in order to end the phase quicker, resulting in overall less healing needed. Another great example of Healing Tide really proving it can shine is in the Rune phase for Odin's fight. As some of you will know in higher keys, the segment of the Odin fight where everyone needs to run to their respective rune does some of the scariest damage currently in the game. Because the runes are so spread out, there is little that most healers can do to keep the group alive while running to their designated rune. Healing Tide is perfect here to pop in the middle of the rune before running, as it will allow even just a little bit more survivability for your entire group and usually in higher keys when people die to this mechanic, they are less than a second away from their rune. Healing Tide grants this extra second and then some. One more example of where I have found Healing Tide to be a huge asset in the current season of Mythic Plus is Melodrusa Chillworm's Chillstorm ability, specifically when it targets you and you have to run out of the group. 
Normally, if a group is topped up and healthy before this ability, and you have other cooldowns like Astral Shift and Spirit Walker's Grace available, you will not need anything else. But towards the end of the fight, on a high tyrannical key where your mana is low and you have fallen behind on healing the group, Healing Tide is the perfect buffer you need while you run the Chillstorm out and then run back to your group to resume your standard AoE healing. Once again, although not the most noticeable throughput, the main goal is always to keep people from dying rather than keep people topped up, and Healing Tide is the little helper that can save you in a pinch for this type of damage window. Finally, before moving on, I would just like to say that on big trash pulls during fortified weeks, Healing Tide can be used as a group healer so that you can focus on DPSing down those big groups and pulling big numbers on the DPS meters. Personally, I always use Healing Tide as much as I can during trash if I know that I will not need it anytime soon for a specific boss mechanic. Any group healing that Healing Tide does during these trash pulls is healing that you don't have to do, which equals more damage that you can do to the mobs, culminating into things dying faster and you timing your key. If you've ever been in a situation where you have missed a key timer by a few seconds, these are the types of situations you need to be considering to prevent that from happening in the future. Every DPS cast counts when you are on the clock. Moving on to what I consider to be one of the best abilities in the game, as well as one of the most diverse, let's talk about Spirit Link Totem. In my opinion, Spirit Link Totem is to us as Rewind is to Evoker. I do not mean that in a healing throughput capacity, but more in the sense that it is something unique that we have in our toolkit that has no equal comparison among the healing cooldowns out there in the game. If you are someone who is under the impression that Spirit Link is just a cooldown for big AoE damage, or that can only be used when a group is clumped together, let me give you some insight into how creative we can really get with this amazing ability. But first, let's discuss those obvious uses. Using Spirit Link during medium sustained AoE or high burst damage when the group is close together is probably what comes to mind to most people when they think about Spirit Link Totem. Perfect for situations like Herja's Storm Bubble, Talash Grey Wing's Absolute Zero ability, Sedona Blood Fury's Whisper of the Dark Star Channel, Tira and Maruk's Gale Arrows, Exploding Shaws throughout most of Jade Temple, and several other mechanics in the current Mythic Plus rotation. A good tip for using Spirit Link in these situations is assigning a few personals or immunities among the group during Spirit Link, as this will allow the people taking less damage overall to act as health tanks for the rest of the group. Do be warned, however, that Spirit Link will not prevent a one-shot if any person within the totem range takes a damage tick that is higher than the current health that they individually have. It is best to think of Spirit Link Totem as a health equalizer rather than a shared health pool. Now for some of the more unconventional situations where I feel Spirit Link is the right tool for the job. First, if there is one person in the group taking lethal damage from any type of stacking dot, or maybe even a ground mechanic that they refuse to move out of, positioning yourself next to this person and dropping a spirit link directly on top of them will allow you to use yourself and anyone else that happens to be close by as a health battery to keep that person from dying. A common instance where I find myself using this is during the War Sphere mobs in Noku Defensive First Trash area, when they decide to gang up and swift stab the same person sometimes almost at the exact same time, which can be lethal in a matter of a second on higher fortified keys. Standing next to the victim, popping Astral Shift, and then using yourself as a battery to keep them alive will prevent you from having to spam Healing Surge on them and will reduce the chance of them dying, allowing you to continue DPSing, dodging other mechanics that are happening such as the Reign of Arrows, and focus other people who may need healing equally as badly. In a similar vein, Dropping Spirit Link in a neutral location in anticipation of high damage abilities where people need to spread out for a time allows a health pool for people to dip into. A great example for this would be during the Veximus boss Mana Bombs ability. Although rarely grouped up enough during this boss fight to have everyone standing in the Spirit Link at once, using it in the middle of the room and having at least one or two people standing in it, usually one being the tank, will allow people who are afflicted by the mana bomb to dip into the totem range for a burst of equalizing health before dipping back out to drop their pool, and possibly prevent them from dying to the last larger tick of damage. One more example of using Spirit Link in this fashion is the Shaw of Doubt, the last boss in Temple. 
If you only have one dispel, that means you are stuck with one dot on a second person for at least 8 seconds for portions of the fight. On higher tyrannical keys, this can quickly become lethal, and losing a person on that boss fight without a battle res is almost a guaranteed wipe due to the damage needed for the add phase and the danger of running out of mana if the already taxing fight is extended. Using Spirit Link in a pinch when you feel you do not have a cast time short enough to stop the dotted person from dying will allow you to use everyone's health as a battery to save the afflicted person from dying while you wait for your dispel. Along the same vein of using Spirit Link to save one person, often that one person can be the most important member of the group, the tank. This leads into another creative way to use Spirit Link, which is as a tank cooldown. Most tanks in higher Mythic Plus keys are adept at handling themselves in the majority of situations, but every so often they bite off a little bit more than they can chew, either via a bigger than anticipated pull, a fixes like bolstering turning regular mobs into heavy damage raid bosses, or stacking dots like piercing shards from Azure Vaults or severing slash from Elgathar Academy that the group was unable to provide enough stops for. Using Spirit Link to save the tank will always be preferable to the tank dying and having to waste a battle res, or worse, having the tank die and the mobs kill a few more people before the tank is able to get back up. The only situation I would say you shouldn't do this is if you absolutely need Spirit Link for an upcoming ability that is happening within the next 3 minutes. Another creative use for Slink is for white protection or recovery. In some situations, something unexpected, or maybe even something expected that you just didn't have the reaction time for, will kill either yourself or the tank. If you are lucky enough to have reincarnate off cooldown or a battle res available, Spirit Link can be immediately used to keep the group from suffering further casualties. Paired with a personal damage reduction defensive and something like Ascendance, you can turn a situation that would have been a sure wipe into an epic save. Speaking of combining Spirit Link with other abilities, in my opinion, Spirit Link plus Ascendance can be the perfect combination as it essentially turns Ascendance into a smart heal. Since Ascendance healing is just a fraction of your regular healing duplicated and redistributed evenly among all nearby friendly targets, regardless of if they have full health or not, Spirit Link can be used to equalize the health of all targets nearby and ensure that none of Ascendance's healing is turned into overhealing, turning what could have been an inefficient cooldown usage into an efficient one. If you have any creative ways to use Spirit Link that I have not mentioned, as I'm sure there are more niche situations where this ability can be a game changer, feel free to share in the comments. Finally, I will go over the Ascendance cooldown. Ascendance is best used when there is heavy AoE damage going out that is affecting the entire group. However, I would venture to say that Ascendance's effectiveness is very much determined by your own effectiveness as a healer. As mentioned, while in Ascendance form, a fraction of all healing you do will be duplicated and redistributed evenly among all nearby targets. If you are someone who struggles with your standard rotation, or are just learning how to properly synergize your abilities and capitalize on procs like high tide chain heals or effectively use downpour, Ascendance will likely not feel as powerful to you as it could if you were maximizing your standard healing potential. Once you have the hang of how to play Resto Shaman effectively in regular situations, you will find Ascendance beginning to feel more powerful the better that you play. Other than that, there are some important points to remember about Ascendance in order to get the most out of it. First, Ascendance is not considered a smart heal like Ancestral Guidance in the sense that it does not discriminate between targets who are at full health and targets who are at lower health percentages. Ascendance will always distribute its healing equally among all targets in range. Because of this, it is not effective or efficient to use Ascendance during windows where only one or two people are taking heavy damage. To bring up Lu Flame Heart Serpent Strike's ability again, Ascendance will do little to help your tank survive those damage windows. Conversely, during abilities like Persia's Storm Bubble or Raging Tempest's Electrical Storm, Ascendance is perfect for ensuring everyone in the group is getting an equal share of additional healing to prevent any one person from getting too low for you to save them with a quick healing surge. Next, the range is only 20 yards, meaning Ascendance is best used when the people who require healing are somewhat grouped up and close to you. 
For situations where there is sustained AoE damage going out and the group is spread out more than 20 yards apart, Healing Tide should be the preferred cooldown with its range of 40 yards. Keep in mind that Ascendance does not duplicate totem healing, meaning it does not benefit from popping Cloudburst or using Healing Tide totem during the duration of Ascendance. That being said, please do not take this to mean that you should never combine Ascendance with Healing Tide or Ascendance with Cloudburst, or even all three. Since you should be going nuts with your AoE healing while in Ascendance anyways, any Cloudburst you have down during Ascendance's duration should still do a big burst of healing if you are going all out during your Ascendance window. Additionally, for Healing Tide Totem, there are possibilities such as Raging Tempest's Electrical Storm that do enough damage on higher tyrannical keys to warrant using both abilities at once. Once again remember that Healing Tide can be thought of as a buffer or complement to whatever other abilities and cooldowns you are using, rather than to augment them. In my opinion, Ascendance is the ultimate pair-up cooldown, meaning that you will get extra effectiveness out of your standard smaller cooldowns like Downpour and High Tide Chain Heals. I personally love to pop Ascendance when the group takes a huge burst of damage and immediately use a Nature Swiftness Chain Heal, even better when souped up with High Tide, followed by a downpour for a huge burst of healing on the group within just a couple of seconds. Ascendance also pairs beautifully with Bloodlust since, as mentioned, the more effective you are with your heals while in Ascendance, the more effective Ascendance will be. Speaking of pairing cooldowns, never use Ascendance during a high movement window where you will need to reposition unless you have Spirit Walker's Grace up and available or if you absolutely need the burst of healing that Ascendance gives when it gets popped in order to live while you are repositioning. And finally, something that is often overlooked, Ascendance is a huge personal cooldown and the initial burst of self-healing gained from activating the ability can be compared to using a healing potion or a health stone. One of my go-to defensives for fights like Hersha or Raging Tempest where I feel like I am about to die but also need to focus on AoE healing the group is to pop Ascendance and then Astral Shift immediately after, providing enough healing and damage reduction to keep me alive without having to cast a single heal on myself, meaning I can do all of that while completely focusing on someone else who needs medical attention. Now that I have gone over all of our major cooldowns and how I try to maximize their potential in my own kit, here is a summary of my 4 big time go to cooldown uses between all cooldowns that allow me to deal with each and every high stress big damage window across the current Mythic Plus season. Cooldown number 1, Ancestral Guidance paired with a Trinket or Racial Ability. In my case, I usually pair it with the Crit Trinket from Shadowman Burial Grounds, Voidmender's Shadow Gem, or my Orc Racial or even both of these if the situation is extra spicy. When Ancestral Guidance is active, I focus on my big AoE heals, usually in this priority order. 1. High Tide Chain Heal 2. Downpour 3. Primordial Wave plus Healing Wave Cleave on at least 3 targets 4. Regular Chain Heal Try to ensure you always sneak in a Riptide before casting any Chain Heal to proc the lower cast time from Tidal Waves. If you have a Cloudburst Totem down while you cast all of these, your Cloudburst will pop for a massive burst of healing. This combination of abilities will get you through the majority of burst damage windows in the game up to and including 23s. Note that the effectiveness of all of this is amplified if you also have Bloodlust active. Cooldown number 2, Ascendance with a Trinket or Racial, and if the situation calls for it, using Spirit Link to provide some group damage reduction and force Ascendance to be a smart heal. With this combination, I would then follow the same priority AoE heals as I did for Ancestral Guidance. Cooldown number 3, Healing Tide Totem, which I usually save for oh no situations where I need to handle a mechanic that requires movement and I can't cast, such as high movement required during Talash Grey Wings, Frost Bombs, and Absolute Zero abilities. I also use Healing Tide when my standard healing or cooldowns 1 and 2 that we just went through are not enough by themselves to keep the group alive. An example of this is Hersha Storm Bubbles, where I find myself always using Healing Tide on the third set in addition to Ancestral Guidance and my Crit Trinket, which is detailed out in the 22 Tyrannical Hersha Guide posted on my channel. And finally, cooldown number 4, Spirit Link Totem. 
my personal favorite because of how versatile it is. You can use it during AoE damage to equalize health among the group and prevent individual deaths. You can use it to keep one person alive who is suffering every single target damage by using yourself or others as a health battery. You can use it for the 10% damage reduction to combat some of the one-shot mechanics and higher tyrannical keys, like Balakar Khan's Phase 2 Thunder Sphere, and the list goes on for how you can incorporate this into your strategy. You can even use Spirit Link Totem to save an unfortunate melee DPS who takes 95% health hit from a surprise spiteful shade. Note that you can also pair Spirit Link with class damage reduction cooldowns like Demon Hunter's Darkness or Death Knight's Anti-Magic Zone for some super crazy damage reduction that can withstand massive group damage on higher keys. Using these four cooldown combinations and even mixing them together when the situation calls for it, you will be an unstoppable force of healing power in the majority of situations for the current content that is out. With enough practice and muscle memory, you will find yourself doing some pretty incredible things that will make the group you are with question how it is even possible. Now before I end this lengthy yet hopefully informative video, I wanted to quickly touch on some of the smaller cooldowns that you should be regularly incorporating into your standard rotation, as well as using the four major cooldowns mentioned above. First, let's briefly discuss Nature's Swiftness. Being on a 1 minute cooldown, Nature's Swiftness should be used liberally as well as creatively depending on the situation at hand. If you have a high tide chain heal waiting in the chamber, you can pop Nature's Swiftness in anticipation of a high damage ability and then cast Cloud Burst, Flame Shock, and Lava Surges until the ability happens, and once it does, slam down that chain heal button for an immediate group heal without wasting a cast time. If you are someone who struggles with mana on longer boss fights, Nature's Swiftness provides a free chain heal or healing rain which can really add up when you are doing 3-5 to five minute boss fights. You can also use it to cast an immediate acid rain or chain lightning to augment your DPS without wasting a cast time. And best of all, you can use it in an emergency while you are moving or repositioning for a mechanic and someone takes an unexpected burst of damage. I find myself most often pairing Nature's Swiftness with chain heal, healing rain, Healing Surge, and Chain Lightning. Next, just as briefly, let's talk about Spirit Walker's Grace. This cooldown is also one that can be very diverse depending on the situations in which you decide to use it. The most obvious one is when you need to heal while on the move. The next most obvious one is where you want to continue DPSing while the tank is running ahead collecting more trash packs. The not-so-obvious ways are when you consider that Spirit Walker's Grace can be activated mid-cast without interrupting, meaning if you are about to experience a knock-up from something like the Volcanic Affix, or the Flame Bomb from the Blazebound Destroyer ads in Ruby Life Pools, or if you all of a sudden need to run away from a mechanic but you are mid-heal and someone is about to die, you do not have to sacrifice your current spell or move out of the way. My advice for being able to get the best use out of Spirit Walker's Grace is to hotkey it somewhere where your muscle memory can hit it without it being a second thought, as using this effectively requires snap judgments and quick reaction times. Another minor cooldown that can pack a big punch is Primordial Wave. If you are proficient at keeping Riptides on as many members of your group as possible in your regular healing rotation, Primordial Wave is already an ability that will fit perfectly into your kit. This cooldown allows you to send out a group heal via Healing Wave Cleaves on all targets affected by Riptide, and can be extra useful in situations where players are spread out or who may be too far away to be affected by Chain Heal or Downpour. In preparation for a big damage ability, you can place a Cloudburst Totem down and get Riptide out on as many players as possible. After the damage goes out, use Primordial Wave to get one last Riptide out, and then use a Nature's Swiftness Healing Wave combo to heal the entire group up. Follow up with a Chain Heal or Downpour, and then recall your Cloud Burst for a burst of healing. This combination will usually top up an entire party while using hardly any mana. Do note that modifiers to your Healing Wave, such as Master of the Elements or Focused Insight, will unfortunately not affect the cleaved healing waves. However, do not let this deter you from incorporating this unique ability into your standard rotation. Although not as powerful as the four major cooldowns we have already discussed, when used properly, Primordial Wave can get you through big damage windows while being extremely efficient on mana. One more tip for this ability, 
After casting Primordial Wave, you can choose a target with or without Riptide on them to cast your Healing Wave. If you choose a target with Riptide already on them, it will essentially hit them with two Healing Waves. Consider this scenario. There are three players who all have Riptide on them and you have just cast Primordial Wave. Two of the players have 70% health and one of the players had 30% health. If you target the person with 30% health with your next healing wave, they will receive both the regular healing wave as well as a cleaved healing wave, meaning that you will be able to top up all players with one cast, even though one of them had way less health than the others. And finally, a huge defensive cooldown that often gets overlooked is the Spirit Wolf talent that augments Ghost Wolf. This talent provides a stacking buff every one second while in Ghost Wolf for a maximum of 4 stacks that increases your movement speed by 5% per stack and decreases the damage you take by 5% per stack. If you have a clear head and are thinking preemptively, you can go into Ghost Wolf before one-shot or close to one-shot abilities in high tyrannical keys, once again like Valakar Khan's Phase 2 Thunder Spear, Odin's Rune Phase, or Tira and Maruk's Gale Arrows, and you will take noticeably less damage if you have the maximum number of stacks, giving you a 20% damage reduction. Sometimes this is even enough to save you from what would have been a sure death. To speak to the rest of Shaman's amazing personal and group utility, there are also other cooldowns that I have not even covered in this video. Learning how to effectively utilize each and every ability in your kit is crucial to success in higher keys and mythic rating. And so my last piece of advice to you would be practice, practice, and more practice. If you are not regularly using the abilities and combinations mentioned in this guide, I highly encourage you to get them on your bars. Make them big, make them obvious, and put them front and center on your screens and allow them to help you reach your full potential. If you found this guide useful or have anything you would like to add for how you personally use your cooldowns and combine them, I would love to see it in the comments below. You can also DM me anytime on the Resto Shaman Discord or in-game and I am always happy to discuss all things Resto Shaman. Until next time, happy healing.